Good morning, everybody. This is uh, jo Jokos. I am uh, at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, an affiliate with medical school. And first of all, I have to apologize for not being able to make it to a beautiful country. Uh, this would have been my first time to India, and I was looking very much forward to it. Unfortunately, family events turn out otherwise. Today, I would like to discuss with you a couple concepts as we try to develop new drugs, new approaches for patients with stomach cancer hematosis. I will be discussing two concepts, that of identifying targets and then how to deliver the treatment and deliver a drug in a targeted manner. The concept that I will be working around is depicted in this uh, cartoon here. Uh, we have been studying T cells, and we had found that lupus T cells, as you very well know, don't produce sufficient amounts of interleukin 2, where they produce lots of the pro inflammatory cytokine IL 17. This we link to the expression of a molecule known as calcium calmodulin kinase 4, a serine threonine kinase. In parallel, we had found that cells of the kidney specifically messenger cells and podocytes express increased amounts of this kinase, and this increased expression compromises their function. Because this is a clinical meeting, and just to point out how all this started, I want to share with you something you know, that the major cause of death in patients with lupus is infections. Patients with stomach lupus erythematosus are internally immunocompromised. Obviously, the treatment that we provide to these people uh, immunosuppresses them and exposes them further to infectious agents. As you all know, infections also feed the autoimmune response. The kinds of infections that we encounter in patients with lupus are those very similar to the ones we see in patients with the HIV infection, namely many, many opportunistic infections, and uh, we as clinicians have to be aware of this particular fact. An overview of the cellular and cytokine events in patients with lupus from 30,000 feet. You know, B cells produce autoantibodies that deposit to tissues, either alone or of immune complex, and B cell function is controlled by T cells. Over the years, we have learned that T cells in patients with lupus have a, an antithetic personality, so to speak. They're known, on one hand, to provide excessive help to B cells to produce autoantibodies, but simultaneously, they cannot raise cytotoxic responses, hence, they increased. Uh, infection rates. At the cytokine level, as already mentioned, they don't produce sufficient amounts of the important cytokine interleukin-2, where they produce increased amounts of the inflammatory cytokine IL-17. IL-2 production is decreased in patients and mice with lupus, and also the acid is decreased, suggesting a transcription of the effect. And interleukin is very much needed for the expansion, the generation and expansion of regulatory T cells, the generation and expansion of uh, activation induced cell death, and cytotoxic responses. On the other hand, interleukin 17, which is produced at increased amounts both by the CD4 cells and by a subset of T cells known as double negative, that is, T cells. We have CD3 on the surface, but do not have CD4 or CD8, in which are expanded both in mice and humans to stomach lupus erythematosus. And interleukin-17 is very important, obviously, in fending infections and developing inflammatory responses. They provide help to T follicular helper cells. And as you know, T follicular, T, I'm sorry, TH17, that is, these are producing IL-17 are increased in SLE patients and they're present in tissues. We and others have demonstrated that they're present in the kidneys. 
while trying to understand why lupus T cells don't produce L2, where they produce a lot of L17, we came across a transcriptional repression known as SPREM, cyclic MP response element modulator, which uh, we found to bind to the promoter region of the interleukin-2 gene and across the locus of IL-2 and close it down, not allowing its transcription activity. In parallel and in the same cells, we found that CREM alpha binds to the promoter of IL-17 alpha and the locus of IL-17, and instead of closing it down, it keeps it open. We don't know exactly how it keeps it open, but it is, and probably there is an extra molecular event which uh, uh, evades us at this particular moment. Asking why creme alpha binds at increased levels in these two loci, we came across uh, the kinase, which I mentioned in my first slide, the calcium calmodulin kinase 4, which uh, upon engagement of the T cell receptor, either by antibodies against the tissue receptor or autoantigens, it moves from the cytoplasm to the nucleus, where it binds to the L2 promoter and suppresses its production. So, place some K4 upstream of creme alpha, and we're convinced that the levels of K4 sort of act like a thermostat in controlling the activity of creme alpha, which in turn uh, controls the ratio of the production of IL-2 and IL-17. Lots of CAMP4 will result in increased amounts of IL-2 and increased amounts of IL-17 and vice versa. So there are two concepts, major concepts in our efforts to develop treatments for patients with lupus. One of them is obviously to identify the target. It is important to identify the correct target. Then, because every drug has ID is uh, not specific, starting from asking for all the drugs the physicians use, it is important that we deliver that drug to the cells that are affected or contribute to the certain immunopathology. And that's what people call, and I refer to, as targeted delivery of uh, the medications. And I will uh, share with you examples as to how we uh, address it. First, knowing that CAMK4 is increased in T cells from patients with lupus and T cells from the lupus prone mouse, LLPR, we used a an inhibitor of MK4, K93, which is not very specific to MK4 because it inhibits also K2. But look, these cells don't have uh, KMK2 increase. They have only KMK4. When we started treating these mice before they developed disease, we were able to see that both proteinuria and the numbers of leukocytes in the urine were all suppressed. We asked whether we can First, the process after the disease has started. So we started administering K93 to mice on to lupus, the MRLPR mouse, after they had started developing disease, which is about week 12 of age. And as you can see here, we're able to see that uh, late administration of CAMK4 inhibitor was able to reverse the disease process. Because drugs, as already alluded to, are never specific, we wanted to make sure that indeed MK4 is involved in the development of the immunity and pathology in the push mice. And for this reason, we backcross a MK4 null locus into the lupus prone mouse, and we generated this MRL LPR MK4 null mouse. This mouse, unlike its control mouse, had significantly less lupus nephritis. Uh, proteinuria was decreased significantly in this mouse, as you can see here. 
Uh, the production of anti-DNA antibodies, both at eight weeks, later at 16 weeks, was uh, significantly decreased. Now, skin disease, which as you know, this mice developed, was also suppressed. And here I'm showing that the deposition of immunoglobulin, the glomeruli, is decreased significantly. We moved on our studies to see how CAMK4 contributes to pathology. And uh, we found that CAMK4 significantly limits the generation or expansion of regulatory T cells. You can see here the number of FOXP3 positive, CD25 positive cells in MRLLPR mice that develop lupus, and how this population is expanded in the absence of CAMK4. This is the mouse, the lupus from mouse, not CAMK4. Not only the numbers are expanded, but also their functional capacity is improved significantly, as you see. Um, we return back to human cells, and here I'm showing that uh, when we silence CAMK4 in T cells, cultured under conditions to be differentiated into regulatory cells, and there's a profound effect on the function of FOX3 regulatory T cells, which are also uh, functionally better. I'm not showing this here. Now, we wanted to expand this observation and be able to record these regulatory T cells. And for that, we generated a mouse in which uh, regulatory T cells appear. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the regulatory T cells, that is the cells that express FOXP3, are marked with a green protein. And we treated this mouse with the CAMK4 inhibitor. As you can see, the number of regulatory cells is significantly expanded in the splints of mice treated with a CAMK4 inhibitor. This mice, just to confirm that with the same observations, the Cancer so under DNA antibodies is suppressed significantly. Now, CAMP4 marks also T helper 17 cells, the TH17 cells. Here you can see that PSTAT3, which uh, is a marker for the transcription factor that uh, signifies TH17, is increased only in cells expanded in vitro under T17 conditions and not under in cells that are expanded under T0 or regulatory conditions. Here is protein measured uh, from different experiments and uh, I'm sorry, and here is the message. Now, as I mentioned already, T cells only come K4 is increased and this is demonstrated in this time kinetics Experiments. And this, for the younger people in the audience, signifies the importance of conduct time and dose experiments of time. If we had not done proper dose uh, time curve experiments here, we, we would have missed this increased expression of CAMK4 and only CAMK4 in, in, in T cells. Now, we took this in vivo experiments. As you know, if uh, you immunize mice with myelin, with the monk protein, with the argyl, they develop a clinical picture which is reminiscent of multiple sclerosis. So here we subjected B6 mice and B6 mice, normal mice, and B6 mice that don't have MK4 to this immunization. And you can see here that if the mice don't have MK4, the clinical or is limited significantly. Also, the weight uh, is uh, restored or preserved significantly. The number of CD4R17 positive cells is significantly reduced in mice that don't have CAMK4, although the number of cells that produce interferon gamma is not affected at all. Also, in this experiment, um, we took uh, 
lymph node cells from the draining lymph nodes and we re-stimulated them in vitro with the monk protein. You can see the cells re-stimulated in vitro do not produce al 17 while the production of interferon gamma is not affected. And this experiment signifies specificity. When we look at the spines of these mice, you can see that the mouse that doesn't have come before and subjected to mog protein immunization has uh, significantly less inflammation in the spine. And also this mouse preserves the myelin structure, that is, it is not demyelinated. This is looks fast blue straining to assess myelin content. We conducted a number of other experiments to expand on the molecular mechanisms of CAMK4 in expanding al and suppressing IL-2. And I will not bore you with all the uh, biochemistry. Uh, it has been pu published recently in clinical investigation a year or two ago. You can see here that upon engagement of uh, this receptor, either with anti-CD3 bodies or antigen, calcium increases, calcium calmodulinase increases, and phosphorylates cream, an event that we already discussed with binds to the absent from Simultaneously, CAP4 phosphorylates AKT, which in turn phosphorylates mTOR. Uh, and we know that because the phosphorylation, the substrate of M4 is increased. So M4 accomplishes suppression of, I'm sorry, enhancement of IL-17 production through two distinct mechanisms. One that involves this pathway here and the bundle of programma T, canonical transcription of IL-17 and the binding of gram uh, after it's been phosphorylated before. Now, this mouse that already mentioned taught us a lot and brought us into new levels of understanding of what is going on in, uh, in the kidneys of both patients and mice. Here, you can see uh, we isolated messenger cells from the kidneys of a control mouse, control background, the lupus one mouse, and the mouse, the lupus prone mouse that died in K4, and we put them in culture recorded uh, proliferation. You can see that if the messenger cells don't have K4, do not proliferate, even in the presence of platelet derived of factor. Now, messenger cells, as you know, produce lots of IL 6, and IL 6 has been demonstrated many years ago independently drive glomerular practice. You can see that the messenger cells from mice that they don't have TAMK4, they don't produce IL-6, even when they're stimulated with PDGF. Now, let me just briefly introduce the electromicroscopy structure of the kidney, of the glomerular specifically. You see this is a capillary with a basement membrane. The outside, you see the podocyte, you see the feet attaching to the membrane all around nice. Inside, you see the endothelial cells. Now, mind you that this circle is not perfect, and part of the capillary is covered by endothelial cells. And therefore, every time you have two complexes going through the capillary lumen, some of them, necessity, they move into the mesenchium. So every time you sneeze and you have immune complexes, one of them is going to be found in the mesenchium. That is very important, and we usually uh, overlook that event. We looked at the expression of MK4 now into, in podocyte from patients with stem lupus erythematosus. As you can see here, Nephrine, let uh, me just introduce to you nephrine. Nephrine is a marker of podocyte, and it's the protein that is, is making the feet uh, touch together perfectly. It's almost like zipper protein. And 
participates in limiting the filtration of uh, proteins. You can see here that podocytes uh, identified by Nephrine express from lupus patients express CAMK4, and you can see the yellow color over here. So podocytes from patients with lupus express increased amounts of CAMK4. To enable our studies in vitro with mice, we documented that podocytes from lupus prone mice, the MRL LPR mouse, also express increased amount of K4. And also for additional studies, we injected LPS into normal mice and were able to see that they express increased amounts of K4. And this is for additional studies. So lupus podocytes from lupus prone mice and humans with lupus nephritis express decreased amount of CAMP4. When we expose podocytes into IgG from, from patients with lupus, we could see that it, IgG entered the podocytes and this localized with increased CAMP4. This IgG entered through the FCRN receptor, which podocytes and when we silence that, the deposition or the entrance of IgG into the podocytes is decreased significantly. There is a cartoon that was prepared by the editors of Arthritis and Rheumatology where we published this study. You can see here immunoglobulin, the capillary, going through the basement membrane, the endothelial cell, the basement membrane, and entering the feet of the podocyte through the FCRN receptor. As soon as that happens, CAMK4 increases. And when CAMK4 increases, the expression of nephrine, the zipper protein that I mentioned keeps the gate here tight, it decreases significantly. While the expression of stimulatory molecules like CD86 increases significantly, which indicates that podocytes can serve as, as, as other temperature cells, they express also MHC, but this is another story I'm not going to get into. And when you inhibit MK4, the levels of nephrine are restored, and the expression of CD86 uh, is suppressed significantly. Now, let me finish up by telling you about delivering medications in a targeted manner. To accomplish that, work with Tarek Fahmy at Yale University, the Department of uh, uh, Medical Engineering, and uh, we constructed nanolipogel, which we loaded with uh, an inhibitor of CAMP K4, K93. Uh, on the surface of these nanolipogels, we placed streptavidin. Streptavidin allow tag these nanolipogels with immunoglobulin, any immunoglobulin, any antibody we wanted. And here in infected cultures, you can see when we targeted this nanolipogels against CD4, the proliferation of CD4 cells was decreased, but that of CD8 was not affected, and vice versa. We loaded this nanolipogels at the beginning with a red color, and you can see that when we coated them with the CD4 antibody, we're able to see them in, in the space of the mass. Well, if we didn't target the CD4 antibody, we could not find them because they were dispersed everywhere all around. We decided to use nanolipogels loaded with K9 and tagged with another CD4 antibody into mice that were immunized with MOG to develop experimental allergic encephalomyelitis, which I already mentioned, mimics multiple species. You can see here that only the mice that were treated with nanolipogels loaded with K93 and tagged with a CD4 antibody had significantly less clinical score and preserved their weight. Similarly, these mice with 
demonstrate decreased infiltration in the spinal cord, as you can see here, and also this smile indication was preserved. We repeated this experiment with slightly different design uh, in MRL LPR mice. Uh, the design is here. You see the mice that receive nanolipid gels loaded with K93 and tagged with CD4 antibody had significantly less skin disease. Proteinuria was significantly decreased as shown here, and so was the histological picture. The, the, the levels of R17 in the sera was decreased significantly, and so were the number of R17 producing cells that were infiltrated the kidney. We did not record any changes in the spleen, and also we did not record any changes in the levels of anti-DNA antibody production. Then we said, all right, we can do that by targeting T cells. Can we deliver a, a CAMP4 inhibitor specifically to kidney resident cells? We thought of delivering it to angel cell, as you can see, most of the proteins expressed by these angel cells are expressed practically by every other cell all around them. But other sites express potassium and nephrine, which I already mentioned, and is expressed almost exclusively by podocyte and unfortunately uh, by the central nervous system. I don't know, we, nobody knows what that is in there. So we decided to load nanolipid cells with a red color, tag them with, a nef with an antinephrine antibody, and we were able to see this label nanolipid cells into the kidney, the podocytes, delivered in a very, very specific manner. Mind you, in doing that, we accomplish the same effect as when we administer free K93 systemically at 20 times uh, high doses. That is, as you understand, important. Now, when we treated lupus blood mouse with analipid gels coated with an antinephrine antibody or an antipodocin antibody and loaded the nanolipid gels with K93, histolo histology was significantly ameliorated. You don't see the crest you see in the front house. And also proteinuria is decreased significantly. More importantly, and to our surprise, we were able to demonstrate that the immune complexes which deposit amply in the, in the kidneys and glomeruli of lupus born mice, they don't deposit, and the photocytes have a normal function. This particular observation, although we have a long way to prove it, indicates that if we preserve the structure, the function of photocytes, immune complexes don't deposit. Because these mice that were treated with the uh, antinephrine nanolipid gel loaded with K93 had an immune response in the periphery, in the spleen, in the kidney that was not affected at all. Now, uh, here it's uh, accomplishing the same thing in another model where we injected, we injected LPS. LPS causes a temporary photocytopathy and results in proteinuria. Yes. And if we treat this mice uh, before okay. we administer LPS without the photocytopathy and uh, coated and loaded in 93, we were able to suppress it. We then conducted experiments, and I will go through very briefly. I don't want to bore you with the biochemistry to understand what exactly is happening. We believe at this point IgG from lupus patients utilizes the FCRN, the natal receptor, enter the protocyte. That results in the expression of CAMP4. 
Now, CAMP4 affects the function of a number of enzymes. One of them correlates the scaffold product, and by doing so, it releases the pondin, which is an important structural protein for keeping photocyte appearance normal. Simultaneously, it affects the ratio of these two molecules that control motility of motorcycle. I'll show you only this. You can see that um, motorcycles that are treated with K93 preserve actin structure, while the myers, the motorcycles that are not treated with K93, they lose the actin structure. You can see the difference from here to here and here. This is uh, two different approaches. One is inhibiting CAMK4 with K93. The other is silencing CAMK4 uh, with a small RNA. Uh, also here, I will show you only this um, and nothing more. Is um, This is an experiment which specifically tells us how other side motility is affected. Uh, you can see here that what we do is we plate the podocytes and they become confluent. And then we take a knife and we generate this cut here. And then we let the cells grow again. As you can see, when CAMK4 is increased, the cells grow fast. While CAMK4 is silenced, the cells don't move. Now, mind you, that in the mice, that we administered nanolipogens loaded with K93 and tau to nephrine failed to develop crescent. Many nephrologists believe that crescents are the product of dividing mobile podocytes. So probably if we inhibit before, we will inhibit the formation of crescent. With this, I want to summarize and finish with exactly the same cartoon I started, indicating CAMK4, I call it a link. It's a, it's a molecule that simultaneously affects the malfunction. It dictates the malfunction of T-cells in lupus patients and simultaneously the function of resident cells in the kidney, the podocyte in the mechanism. And with that, I want to acknowledge the people who drove this line of work, particularly the late Dr. June Kunihiro, Tomo Koka, Totoro, and Keiako, and Maria Chokos, who works with us, is a professor here at Harvard, and Tarek Fami at the University of Maine. Again, I want to apologize for not being able to travel to your beautiful country. I had been expecting that all year. And as I've explained privately to Dr. Agarpal, uh, family events have uh, prevented me from coming there. I hope that you will give me another chance in the future. Because I'm not there, please feel free to email me questions. I would feel very positive if you tell me questions. And Lastly, I want to acknowledge uh, the, my sponsors, uh, the NIMES, the NID, and the Lupus Insight Prize from the three Lupus Foundation. With that, I want to finish, and thank you very much for my, your attention, and again, apologize deeply to you.